Okay, so let, let, let's talk a little bit about the Born Haber cycle. Okay, what we're really saying with the Born Haber cycle is let's use Hess's law to find lattice energy. So, if, for example, we were given, you know, all this information, all right, so let's say we were given enthalpy of formation, the enthalpy of sublimination, you know, bond disassociation energy, all these things. If we were able to write out those equations and we knew the amount of enthalpy that we were producing uh, as a result of that, okay, whether negative or positive, aka whether it's being released or absorbed by the reaction, okay, um, you know, all of this information will play a role in determining the lattice energy, okay? So the question at hand is going to ask for, you know, the one that I have basically written in the description is asking for the lattice energy of rubidium chloride, okay? And what they're really asking, okay, so if we have rubidium chloride solid, okay, and we want to break it down into its constituent ions, all right, it would turn into rubidium, and this is a plus charge, and it has to be in gas form, right? Uh, and then the next one over here is going to be Cl minus and also in gas form, okay? When you're calculating lattice energy, you're really taking a solid and, and trying to get its constituent ions in a gas form, okay? So this is the case that you're going to be dealing with uh, for this problem. So if we were given a certain set of information, okay, we should be able to cancel things out and then at the end end up with this as well as a certain uh, amount of energy, right? And this energy here, this, this change in enthalpy, uh, is actually going to be our answer. That's going to be our lattice energy, okay? So, you know, I'm sure that by this point in time, you know, by some future point in time, I would have gone over um, the Hess's law. So I'm just going to assume that we all know what Hess's law is, and we're just going to go into interpreting data. Now, the difficult thing about these problems is that, well, you know, they're not giving you all of the information straight up, right? I mean, in the past, we were given something like, you know, if we had this to begin with, um, you know, and then we had uh, other things right underneath it, we could, you know, pretty much cancel them out and use them just like we did our normal uh, Born-Haber problems, correct? But the problem is that we're never going to be given explicit information like this. We're going to have to derive this from information that they give us, okay? Now, if they don't give you any kind of information, if they're just like, okay, well, now find the lattice energy, and they don't give you anything else, well, chances are you're going to be looking for one of a couple things, okay? The first thing is you're going to be looking probably for the, for the enthalpy of formation of whatever ionic compound you have. Okay, so for our example, you know, one of the things we should definitely be looking for here is going to be our enthalpy of formation of rubidium chloride, okay? So we're, we're going to talk about the question, obviously, I'm going to read that off, but, you know, just know that, yeah, one of the things you should look for if they don't give you anything is going to be this enthalpy of formation of, ion, of an ionic compound, okay? Uh, the second thing you should be looking for is going to be the electron affinity of your anion, Okay, so for example, here we have Cl minus, right? So we should be able to say, all right, well, we have Cl, uh, and this is going to be Cl gas, all right? Because whenever you're doing your electron affinity, it's in a gas form, right? And we're going to say, okay, well, if we basically have our Ea of our anion, okay, what I really want to do is to say, hmm, all right, well, I have this plus an electron, and I'm going to turn that into Cl minus, right? And that's also a gas, okay? Keep in mind that your electron affinity, your ionization energy is always an, a plus over, over here. Now it's not a plus minus, it's just a plus, all right? So the next thing you should look for definitely is your IE of your cation, which will always be in the form of something like, you know, in the case of, let's say, rubidium chloride, all right? We're going to say, okay, well, we have rubidium. And now we're going to steal, oh, and, and this is in a gas phase here, okay? Now, now we're just going to steal an electron from it. So the rubidium gets a, a negative charge. This, again, is in a gas form here, okay? So this will be basically the format that we'll be looking at. Rubidium gas turns into rubidium gas, you know, with a plus charge plus an electron, okay? Uh, and then finally, um, at the very end, um, well, hmm, hmm. So we have that, we have our, you know, whatever. And then, you know, if you basically have something like, let's say, 
you know, because we're basically pulling these out of a gas form, right? So if, if what we started with, uh, what we really want, okay, to calculate our, um, our enthalpy, you know, our total lattice energy for this, is that we want these in a gas form, correct? So we wanted, we said we wanted rubidium in a gas form, and this is rubidium plus, and we wanted Cl minus in a gas form, okay? Which is that, okay, well, actually rubidium in its natural elemental form is a solid. So what we really want, you know, as kind of our step four here, okay, is we want, we want basically to convert this solid into a gas. Okay, likewise, we're going to want to take this over here. Now, this is already a gas, right? But is, is, chlorine, going to, is chlorine going to be found as, a, as one chlorine? No, it'll probably be Cl2 gas, right? So you'll want to be able to convert that into your Cl minus gas, okay, or just write one Cl. Now from there, okay, now that you have your one Cl gas, do you see up here how I see Cl gas plus electron over here uh, is my Ea? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Cl minus, my Cl anion, all right, from this conversion, okay, uh, because I'm going to start off with my Cl2 gas, I'm then going to get one half Cl2, or actually just one Cl, and then I I can cancel it out using this CL up here. So let's actually do this step by step. Uh, but actually, you know what? I'm just going to treat that kind of like an introduction into Bornhaber, and, and I guess the next video I'm going to solve it.